I'm getting some very odd looks in this car right now. It's probably understandable. No bumper at the front, no bumper at the back, no side trim. It looks like I've just dragged it out of a scrapyard. Well, technically I have dragged it out of a scrapyard, kind of. But it really looks it now. Oh, on top of all the rattling and wind noise, I've just heard another noise. I think the arch liners are flapping on the road. I'm going to have to pull over and deal with that before I run out of arch liner. I meant to do this last night, I completely forgot. But obviously these arch liners were flapping on the ground and were pulled underneath the car. So I had this blue wire, which is from the old AV, or AV audio setup that used to be in the back of it. This is a trigger wire for the amp, I think. So we snapped a bit of wire off that, tied that up there, that up there, hopefully no more terrifying noises. Well, you join me today at the wheel of Quentin the Rover Convertible. And you may notice the interior is a bit more spartan than usual. and. There's a lot of wind noise going on. In fact, a minute or two ago, there was a lot of terrifying noise going on. Um, why am I driving in half a car? Why am I in the lightweight racing spec Quentin? Yes, today we are going for paint. So I spent most of yesterday tearing this car apart because to get the price down on the paint job, something they've asked me to do is to prepare the car. So it is now, not much disassembly needed they just need to sort of just crack straight in with the sandpaper basically and get on with the painting i've done nearly all of it i'm not quite sure how much extra this would have cost on the overall uh, bill at the end of it but as i say it took me the best part of the day to get all the bumpers side trim uh, i took the mirror so if i put this mirror back on again because it occurred to me i'm not actually legally allowed to drive without a mirror and just pulled into a dual carriageway where it was surprisingly useful so yeah mirrors turned out to be a good thing who knew um, so yeah, we're currently in convoy uh, with my, my buddy Jace, my colleague, uh, who's got the bumpers of this car in the back of his Saab. My buddy Jace, you may remember, he has owned a few Saab cars actually that have been on this channel. He had a Saab 9.5, then he owned the Omega, which we did a review on on this channel as well. And uh, he's now got a Saab 9.3, which is actually quite handy because it's got a nice big hatchback so we can fit two bumpers in the back of it. Now, by the time you watch this, this car will be off in the paint shop getting shiny. However, before it goes, I've got a few quick things to do. I've got to spend a bit of time undoing all the body trim, getting the car ready to go into the body shop to save a few pounds by doing a bit of prep here at home. So side trim, grill, hockey sticks, all that kind of stuff's got to come out, bumpers off as well, before it goes off to the body shop. Well, dodging rainstorms is the ideal way to be stripping the interior of a car, but I have started as I said on a previous video, got a few of these new dishes now so I can have a different dish for each project named so I know which screws go where. And this is even like positioning where they go in the car. That's the front near side headlight. So I put the door screws here, rear trim screws here, rear bumpers. So I've got everything organized for when it goes back together. That is genius, like a diamond bullet, diamond bullet genius. Come Pinky, we must prepare for tomorrow night. Why well, Brain, what are we gonna do? We're going to paint the rover. Right, now let's get the door cards off. Now, oh, if you can see it in the background, we did just get a new set of Continental all-season contact tyres for the Mini. This is Furious did previously have uh, two sets of wheels like I did with the Mercedes on a previous Mini, um, because the old shape Mini, it's easy to get a second-hand set of steel wheels or alloy wheels for not too much money, and then have a set of summer tyres and a set of winter tyres. Uh, but this particular shape seems to be really expensive to get wheels for, so I've stuck a set of all-seasons on it because uh, the front tyres were basically uh, on, on the way out. They were no longer going to be legal in about a week's time. So uh, yeah, nice and you set of all seasons on there. So hopefully rain, snow, shine, that car will be lovely to drive. Now the side trim, it comes off nice and easily. There's just little clips, you squeeze the two pins together and off it pops. Really easy on the wing, because you can reach behind the inner wing and away it comes. I actually had been really hoping I could find some way of getting this side trim off the car without having to take all the interior panels off, because that is uh, a whole bunch of no fun. But I did a bit of an ask on uh, one of the forums last night on Facebook and the general consensus is unless you want to buy a complete set of new clips of these things, you've got to take the door cards off and the rear side panel. But actually, I didn't ask the uh, paint shop if they wanted the door handles out or not. But if I have got the door cards off, then they've got the option of taking the door, door handles out if they want to do it. I don't know how in depth they're going to go. I think they're going to come into the door jams, not all the way, but certainly a little way in. Don't forget to undo the little 10 millimeter uh, 
plastic bolt on the end, otherwise you're gonna wind up snapping it. And then with the uh, trim off, you can actually reach inside and undo the little clips and away it pops. The last one at the end, you can't reach all the way down, so you do have to pull the speaker out. I've lost some pliers. There we go. And it's off. Right, so I have found out you actually can take the exterior trim off from the outside by using a very thin screwdriver, long nosed needle nose pliers you can take it off and you can actually undo these from the back of it interestingly only two of these clips have still got rubber seals on and i did notice the bottom of the driver's door was a bit damp so i'll make sure i put some new seals on these when they go back and people do keep asking what's going on with the mercedes it's been oops, being used to store bits of rover right done one side now the other Well, that's not good. That captive nut is no longer captive, but I'll get off in a second. Ah, the front one slides off. I didn't notice that before because I'd already taken that off. There we go. I can't seem to get these uh, side panels out without risking damaging them. They're already cracked in places from previous attempts from other people. And you have to get these uh, winders off, which is a pain, very similar to the P6, which is also a real pain. But what I have done is already pried off the outer one, same technique as before, screwdriver and long pliers, and undid it without any damage. But while I'm here, what I need to do is put this elastic strap down here, because it's lost its elastic, but needs to be anchored down the bottom. But while we have everything partly disassembled, I can cable tie it. I can tie it in a knot shorter, and then cable tie it around this bracket here so that it will hold this corner taut, which needs to be tight, otherwise it will get tangled every time the roof goes up and down. There we go, that's now shackled on both sides and I'll give this all a nice clean up uh, once the uh, car's back from the body shop. We've got quite a lot of uh, interior work to do on the seats once it comes back from the body shop as well. Something to look forward to. Now, the easy bit, well probably not really, the bumpers. Uh, we've got a little tiny bolt just there, bigger bolt there, bigger bolt there, another bolt there, screw over there. And I think there are a couple in the wheel wells as well, and maybe something under the bonnet. It's all in the book, I need to go and check that in a second, but I'll start with these ones underneath. Wow, not rusted solid. Well, one anyway. Now I think this car has had, well I know it's had a new front bumper at some point, because blue paint under the silver and it's flaking off which I guess that's why this isn't completely rusted solid that someone at some point has had this job before and probably done the hard work for me just remember I've got an electric one and these are really long rusty bolts so I don't know why I'm not using that and finally there are two little screws that just sit on either end just under here fortunately they don't seem to be too uh, rusted in either which is nice 
It was going so well. I just had to go and do four more bolts or slacken off four more bolts and I've had the front bumper off. But no, rain. Lots and lots of rain. Well, the rain's finished at last and everything's soaking wet, which is lovely. Now to get this bumper actually off, there are just four bolts, which apparently I just need to slacken off, which are under the headlights. You can reach up and get them just about, but it looks a lot easier to go in with a, uh, well, from above with the headlight removed, I think. So that's a bit of a faff taking the headlight out, but it's not the end of the world. So I'm gonna try that, which is annoying because I took the headlight out last night to get this little hockey stick out. There you go, these four bolts down here, one there, one there, and same on the other side. You just slacken these off and then the bumper just pulls away. That's actually really easy. Uh, just so we don't break the headlight, let's pop it back into a safe place. This should just slide straight off. And what do you know, it does. Whoops, what's it caught on? Ah, oh, damn, it's caught on a peg on the other side. Well, this is quite interesting because although I've got the blue paint flaking off just here, I've also got not very well painted at all, red underneath the silver just here. So this, I don't know, it had a blue undercoat on it, or this bumper has been painted twice in its life. Uh, meantime, I'm just gonna quickly whip off this uh, old number plate with the horrible red outline because it really does look really cheap and nasty. Um, and I'll pop this in the windscreen when we're driving, obviously, because you do have to have a number plate on a car. It's quite important to do that. Also, when I arrive at the paint shop tomorrow, I'm going to whip off the indicators and this red wing for them and the tail lights. Uh, what am I going to say? What am I going with this? <laughs> and they can paint the inside of the red wing, all the shuts and things around that wing and obviously get into all the crevices. Something else I will talk to them about tomorrow, and you see the blue paint up there as well, so interesting. Uh, it, when it was painted previously, someone has masked it kind of in the wrong place, really. They've gone too far up into the black area. The black and the silver should meet in the middle of this crevice where you see blue and red paint flaking off inside there. So hopefully they can clean this out to a suitable level and get it all prepared nicely up at the paint shop. So there we have our lightweight racer looking Rover 200 front end. Now let's get the back end apart. Now on the back, things are a little more complicated because the fixing seems to be a bit better hidden. And also no one's replaced the bumper by the look of it. There's one big, I say big, it's 10 millimeter <laughs> bolt here in the back, in the center, one down. And there's two small ones either side. Then I think you have to take the wheel arch liners out to get underneath, I think. Hmm. It, the, the Rover factory manual is a little unclear about the precise location of the two bolts into the back of this. I need to do a bit more hunting. Well, these last bolts are actually quite hard to find. They are tucked right behind there, concealed from sight. And I need to go and get a long reach socket so I can get those off. I did go underneath the car thinking I needed to take the arch liner off because it says you need to do that in the book, but it doesn't seem to be any reason to actually do that. One. Ah, ah, ah. Ooh, ha, ha, ha. So now it should just slide off. So there's bags of kindling that someone's taken off us in a minute. We have to cut down or prune heavily an apple tree. There we go. Job done. Yay. Sorted. <clears throat> right now I just need to pop off this rear panel, which only fitted not that long ago. Now, I don't know if this bit will be repainted or not because it is the correct color and it's really good condition. So thank you, Matthew, who sent this through to me a little while ago. Um, but this area of the boot here obviously needs to be sanded back, painted. This area here has got a little bit of rust bubbling on the surface, which is hidden by the plastic trim. So that needs to be sanded back and treated as well. So obviously that all needs to come off and uh, they can deal with that with that removed. And I'll quickly whack a number plate on here so they can drive it 
Right, so bumpers are off, side trim is off, lights will come off in the morning when we get there because obviously you'd like to drive there. Wing will come off at the garage as well. We are road legal at the front. The only thing I haven't done are these trims which I couldn't work out how to take off without damaging so I'll have to leave that to the garage to do that. I've put the driver's door card in the boot because it's got electric windows which is in case they need to use the windows to get these bits of trim off which I don't know if they do or not. So yeah, that's that. Let's get the thing uh, parked up for the night and then take it in the morning. So here we are, we're at full circle in Marden. The car is stripped, looking vaguely terrifying. Lights are off, mirrors back off again. This is the last we'll see of it for a couple of weeks time. I'm really excited now to have this thing actually looking like a fresh new car again. Wow, big steps, big days. Right, join me again in a couple of days time to see something else. And in about two or three weeks time to see this thing shiny. Take care everyone. Mm -hmm.